Camera gear for photography can be hard in general and for adventure photography even harder. Kolla på det här alltså det är helt helt otroligt. Helt makalöst. Det är snör i jävel. But when it comes to choosing the right gear for your adventure, there are a few things to keep in mind. And the first step is to take a look at your adventure. So where are you going? Summer or winter? How much can you carry? A few extra kilos of gear can play a huge role in your adventure. I did a week long hike in the northern parts of Sweden. And before that hike, I considered a few different setups, <laughs> but I decided to go with the lighter one because I did not want to bring and carry three to four extra kilos for a week long hiking trip when I already had a backpack that was of around 20 kilos or so. And the main point of this hike was not the photography but rather the adventure. Which brings me into my second point which is that once you have figured out what the adventure is going to be you need to figure out what you want to capture and why. So what is the purpose of capturing it? Is it going to be people, landscape? Where is the footage going to be used? Is it for publishing? or just social media, prints, how much quality are you going to need from your camera? Are you going to shoot mostly stills or video? Are you going to need other accessories for this? And all of these things are really important to keep in mind when choosing the right gear for you. And with all of these different factors I have created a list of my top three cameras for adventure photography. And these three come in at different sizes, different price points and are good for different things. And if you stay to the end of the video I will give you some extra tips and tricks and accessories and gadgets that could be good to have for your next adventure. First camera in my top three list is going to be your smartphone. Boring? Maybe. But it is a great piece of gear and I'm pretty sure you already have a smartphone so the price is going to be pretty much zero and you're most likely going to bring your phone anyway because it's really good to have bring it with you. The biggest con to using your phone as your main camera is going to be the image quality. Simply you won't be able to get the same high quality as if you would bring a higher quality camera. The next step up after a phone would be to get a point and shoot camera and here there are a lot of different options and I personally own a Panasonic Lumix LX100 Mark II, which is a great option, but for today's list I have chosen another one, which is the Sony RX100. The main reason for this pick is the really good quality you get from this small size camera, and also at a really good price. The camera is around 1200 bucks and weighs in at about 300 grams with battery and card. It has a 20 megapixel, 1 inch sensor with a 9 to 72 millimeter length which is something like 24 to 200 millimeter on a full frame camera. This makes it a very versatile camera with a huge span uh, of focal length and a small form factor together with a good price makes it a really good camera to bring for your next adventure. And the last camera for adventure photography is probably one of my favorite cameras of all time in all different kinds of photography and it's going to be the Sony A7 series. This camera series have a lot of different cameras for different purposes, which means you can pick the one that is best for your need. And if you're going to shoot mostly photos, I would go with the Sony A7R 4 or 3. The fourth is the latest and the best version, but the 3 is still really good and is a little bit cheaper. And you can also find a video on that camera up here. So the R series have a lot of megapixels, which makes it so that photos you get from the R series you can pretty much publish anywhere. But if you know that you are going to shoot mostly video, then I would recommend you going with the Sony a7S III instead, because the S series have better video capabilities than the R series. So depending on if you're shooting video or photo mainly, you go with the R or the S series. It is a mirrorless camera that weighs in at around 600 to 700 grams for the body, which is very light for this kind of camera but it is also important to remember that it is going to be a lot heavier and larger than the other options on my top three list but you also have to keep in mind that if you go with a body like the a7 series you also have to get a lens together with that and when it comes to lenses it is the same as with the body that you need to determine what are you going to shoot so what are your needs but if you have no idea where to start a 24 to 70 millimeter 
is a great focal length to start with, which is very versatile and covers a pretty large span. Then there are also a lot of different brands when it comes to lenses. And if you want the absolute best quality, I would say go with the Sony G Master lenses. They are quite expensive, but they deliver the best quality. If you go a little bit cheaper, you can get the Sigma lenses. And the Sigma lenses are some of my favorite lenses. They are a little bit cheaper than the G Masters. Still have really good quality. Build quality is also really good. But the only negative part about the Sigma lenses are that they are a little bit heavier. And my last recommendation for lenses is going to be the Tamron lenses. They work really well. Not quite as good quality as the G Masters. Not really the same build quality as the Sigma lenses according to me. But they are quite a bit cheaper than the other two options. So when you are going for an adventure and you are going to bring a camera. For the most part you want it to be as light as possible but still get the most out of it as possible. But you can't forget that you probably are going to need a few extra gadgets and things on top of the camera and lens. And one of the biggest ones are going to be the battery and the battery life of your camera. So you have to think about how long are your adventure going to go on for, so how much battery are you going to need. Is it going to be enough to just bring one or two fully charged batteries? Or are you going to need to carry with you some kind of charging setup. If that is the case, I would recommend you getting a power bank, a larger one that can charge your batteries. Uh, they can also charge a phone and so on. So a good power bank is essential to bring on longer hikes. The second tip I have is that if you are shooting with your phone, try to find an app where you can change more settings than you can with the original photo app camera app. You want to find an app where you have manual settings and preferably so that you can shoot in RAW as well. This way you can get the most out of the camera on your phone. Third tip is going to be to bring some kind of weather sealed or plastic bags so that you can protect your gear from the rain. And the next little gadget that can be nice to have as an adventure photographer is one of these capture clips. They are really nice because you can have your camera hanging on your chest instead of having it in your backpack. This way you can use it a lot more often and when you do use it you don't have to take off your backpack and unpack your camera and then pack it down again. So you just have it easy, accessible on your chest all the time. And with that said, thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.